oh, where you watch? Look where you watch. No, where you watch. Choose the right thing to watch. And this enough to watch. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan, Facebook and YouTube. And that enough to watch. The movie star flight take off from Pelper Time TV. So that. Boom. A big sound of a big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe Ja Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat Again, so much oppression Poor people face right now Them crying out for freedom Them crying out for free speech Then, said them want to stand up Like them black liberators Like Malcolm X and Martin Luther And the ancient monarchy Where come pay of the way, sir Free up black people from me Tear down them fence, yeah Gideon, I'm a Gideon The Gideon, I'm a Gideon the Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well The Gideon go bustin' out the mat I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity Give us the teaching of His Majesty And we know war, not every... Blue, Mr. Gargan, blue Blue till me dance up me toe This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that. Bad, 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 bad. Him get some whopping bad, bad, bad. Vegas. Him try to be like, say, well, him clever. But him not really clever. You know what I mean? Him not really clever at all. And we have a lot of people who are at zero right now. You could set the minimum wage to 12,000 tomorrow. You'll have a lot of people at zero. If we don't fix the full problem, which I have tried to allude to, allude to, if you don't fix the full problem and you simply talk about your setting minimum wage, all you're doing is increasing the pool of unemployed. Deliver me from my enemy, my God. Set me an eye from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from the bloodthirsty men, for be all they lie and wait for my soul. The mighty gather themselves to gather against me, not for my disobedience, not for my sin, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Rise up, be all and help me. You, Lord God of Armor, the God of Israel, rose yourself to punish the nation. Show no mercy to the wicked, treacherous, sealer. They return at evening, holding like dogs and prowl around the city. Behold, they spat with their mouth, so they are in their lips, for they say, Who art us? But you, Lord, laugh at them, you scrap of all the nation. O oh, my strength, I wish for you, for God is my eye tower. My God will go before me with his loving kindness. God will let me look at my enemy in triumph. Right there, sir. Don't kill them, or my people may forget. Scatter them by their power and bring them down, Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them be catching their pride for the curses and lies which they utter. Consume them in wrath, consume them, and they will be no more. Let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah! At evening, let them return, let them all like a dog and go around the city. They shall wander up and down for food and wait all night if they ain't satisfied. But I will sing of your strength, yes, I will sing a load of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my eye tower, a refuge in the day of my distress. To you, my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my eye tower, the God of my mercy. Up, up, up and running, up and gunning. Sticky, stucky, sweet TV, Keith Gargan, cassava, cassava. Man over matter, up and running, yo, yo. Anyway, show a little previous video from our 2022 Vegas and Patterson, the UIC president. And you know, he come and him try everything still. And you know, when we see, I want to look on this, so I'm have a job about this because as Vegas come back on the day and say, well, then he's a labor right, he support the prime minister with everything we do. You know, see, he do nothing wrong and he want. Him get the third term, so you know what kind of person he is. We should be find out long time. Why am I supporting Jam the Jamaica Labour Party? Why I want the the, the, the um the JFP candidates to win? Because more want them to more want the Jamaica Labour Party to stay in power. More want the Jamaica Labour Party um representatives them <clears throat> to to man the country. 
Yeah, I strongly believe that Andrew Wilness um, should get a, a third um, term. Um, I think he has been dealt, you know, um, a challenging hand, yeah, a difficult hand during his um, his terms. He had to deal with COVID and he's dealing with a recession. So I think that um, he deserves in you know, a third term to, you know, to really get a chance to help put Jamaica, you know, on a progressive path. So I believe in progress. Yeah. So I just want to think that, you understand, this is not just wildly going out saying JLP or PMP because my family did say it. You see? I totally believe in progress. I believe in working hard. I believe in, um, you know, having ambition. I believe in, I believe in um, getting opportunities to, to, um, I believe in getting opportunities to, to, to better myself and taking and making use of the opportunities. You understand? So here we are. Yeah? Now, firstly, let me let you understand something. No politician cannot fix Jamaica. No politician cannot fix Jamaica. The way our people are saying they want Jamaica to be. No politician cannot fix that. You see? What can make Jamaica a better place is the people adjusting or changing their mindset. That is what will benefit Jamaica society or Jamaica at large. The people and mindset. You see? And that Jamaica needs to work on, Jamaicans need to work on the mindset. PMP was in power and people were complaining the same way. JLP now in power. People are still complaining. When PJ was in power for how many years, people were complaining. It's a mindset that the people want to change. The, the Jamaica we want to say, we want the perfect Jamaica we know. Remember, you know? The thing they want to want fix you know, crime, poverty, zen, and um, education. It's them things they want to want fix you know, the main things they want right? Crime, poverty, education. Them things they hear mostly. When they want to fix. Firstly, to fix crime starts with us as Jamaican people. Jamaican people support too much criminals. Health, health, yeah. So, so health is in there too. Give thanks, Afro. Right? Jamaican people support too much criminals. Jamaican people support too much gangsterism, badness. Yeah? Jamaican people need to get out of that thing that we feel like you must be on the side of wrongdoers. Is that what fits the mindset of the people? No matter what kind of crime plan Andrew Wilness put in place or Mark Bolin, it never changed nothing about crime. Because the people, their mindset won't change. On a love too much gangsterism, Virgin. A boy, a road boy, bad man, thug. At them type of people and the same people who are complaining about crime and violence. Them are the type of people who embrace, endorse criminals. So, I uh, wouldn't come around and support this. You know, I send them send them out you know, to try to um, destroy the thing. But you know, the man beat and teach him, wrap him around him, him like a finger, and make him look like a dunce, really, when it comes to politics. Because somebody push him. I'm not tired that, you know, because they are sorry them, them brother here, you know, because they don't want a third party, they don't want, um, and they want Vegas on them side, and that's why him and Nesta are going to bridge you, you know what I mean? But anyway, Patterson beat and teach. Bad, 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 bad. Him get some whopping bad, 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 Vegas. Him try to be like, say, well, him clever, but him not really clever, you know what I mean?
I'm not really clever at all. A lot of way, Patrice beat him up, you know what I mean? Because he asked some question, and he looked like an idiot. If you look, if you listen, <laughs> because we are talking about it for a long time, you know, but we are trying to show us well then. Sometimes he took up more than way. So I mean, I say, I get sent out. Another day, I mean, I say, you know, when he come out, another day, I say, him support, him support um, Andrew Wallace to get the third term. Because him, him see my do, <laughs> him see Andrew Wallace do good and all these things. I mean, I look at his brother and I say, him do he real? Because I remember, you know, Vegas was a man like this, where eh? And the first time he come out, he like he's a man who attack up for justice because him like a, he defend certain things, you know, abuse and, you know, and things like that. And, you know, and talk up certain things, you know, checks away then. But, you know, I notice he never attack for the country. He always keep quiet. I'm kind of look on that, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I say, yeah, well, go on. He have so much more upon everything. He trace a bounty killer in a lot of way and go on and go on till, you know, bounty killer don't pay him no mind and things like that. And he still a go on and a go on and a go on. Like, you know, he may go through everybody, man. And, you know, but he never burned the government once. And if a man, and you see, he come and he show him true colors out of the you know. Well, more than well, more than two, more than one time, because in the Israel war, him say, him can't give a really um, come and try to defend the government. When the government abstain, I never vote with the next caricom, you know what I mean? And abstain for suit the Israel prime minister. Look at that. That's what I'm doing. And bigger, bigger support that. I come and baffle, baffle, and flip flop. Bobby, um, Bobby asked me why I think Jamaica not participating on the crisis in the Middle East. Listen, me. Jamaica already participated. The politician, the, the prime minister, did already say something from the initial start. But the people, them, the people, them, with Bash, Andrew Will, they say, Where am I getting involved for? Because they know him still tight and the people him still bash him. Mm -hmm. But the people him bash him, them beat him, them beat him like wow, them say if him not have enough problem at Jamaica, why him going to take up Middle East problem for him head for? And when him still tight, the people him say why him still tight for? Mm. And then him, him, him sit on his, you know, you know, and him, him now come out and say, no, somebody say, well, look, I push them, push him out, you know, because Vegas is part of the government. You might get some benefit. I mean, I talk with no, I mean, I talk with no, I mean, I talk about, I mean, I just talk when we feel, and that's all it is. Yeah. Because once you support a government, if you support a corrupt government, you know, in your eyes, if you support a corrupt government, in your eyes, and you don't see me do nothing wrong. And you don't see how when the people in a COVID, when they lock down the rascal place, and them a party, and you don't see, you don't see nothing wrong with that. And even the tourists them come and lick out and say it don't right. Because all we on the street and them lock up. And you did there and you talk right here and lay So you see, if anybody will support a government like that, we do all these fucking shit and you know, we, we can't name all the things them. But you know, say nothing and you know, talk about nothing from that. You defend it all the while. That means, you know, you're part of it. And you know, we're not going to go deep in a way you deal with it now. But you are part, you're a, you're a, you're a part of, you, you are getting benefit from GLP. And that's why you defend them like that. Because anybody, they're not going to break down nothing, you know. And that's all it is. And you know, you, you sort of your own mouth, you know me, so, so. You are Nesta Morgan, a brethren. So, all time people say, you know, show me a friend and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> and it's simple as that. So you can go around nothing. So this interview, where you come out, you come to try to bring down uh, Patterson. Send them send you out, cause you know what I mean. I think say well, and you couldn't get it. I you know I said the man ten times brother than you. You know everywhere politics, whatever. But you just come like say things say well, and because you get an next um usher out again, you know, like Jenkins, you know. But you know, you, you feel a school yourself because you're different. We are different the labor right because you let me down still because I'm not like you. That's why I feel big up bounty killer. Up and running. There's a body killer and a rascal, a column with no uh, politician. No side. 
But no pay at all. In bond all of them. Straight. But you go on, you know, you, you, you try to dilly dally all the while and rate and lay late and boom. Then you have to just come out. Because it look like a push up get pushed out again. Because my mind now, if you get benefit from these people, you know, nobody know your advice like where you depend and things like that. Man like you. Why man look pan, you know, because my mind now, them lean pan, entertain all them things. That's what they do. To get them swing, you know. So you get benefit and you now come out, come say nothing. Then push you out. Then you come out the other day, come talk about and you, you trim like you talk and you don't talk confident. Talk with you and you are the rest or something, you know. And I don't have something to see. And it's a shame still. For a man, when I trust you to bright and have some common sense, your common sense will pull a water. And some people say you, you used to talk like country or something like that. But so all you talk up here bullshit. Because if you can't say nothing where the government, where this government uh, I do you defend it. If you go defend um, Israel and um, Palestine war, you know, when little innocent people have um, a, a boom up in you know, and, and, and a, 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 a mash up in you know, pieces, you know, like war, you know, yo. And not even them thing they, you know, have no your heart, but if you come say, well, then you have, you have, you have flip flop on the, on the argument. Somebody asks you a simple question. And you have flip flop. You can't burn out and come and say, no, that is wrong, they should have voted. With the current, the rest of the Caribbean, them. No, but you're not saying that. You're the pan, blue, 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 and a flip flop. <laughs> anyway, what I said, pan this, this one anyway. I said, well, then, you know, Joseph Patterson teach him, you know, beat and teach you. Yeah, man. He beat you and him teach you. Yeah, man, and, him, and, and you, you can't, you, know, you can't come back to this, and this is something I'm like. You know, you know the argument, no counteraction and nothing. You try to come and the man sit down easily, and you don't come from your heart, you know. Because I want to be Joseph Pattis, you know, he's a man who's sharp, and you know what I mean? And enough I want to come after him and him deal with the thing, good, 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 good. But people are going to wake up and see what's going on. That's all I'm saying. Because you can't plot lot, um, Talk and answer a straight question ten times more than Andrew Wallace without a flip flop and, uh, and like fragging a throat all them rascal that thing there. Yeah, man, watch your man there. Um, no man, a straight man. So, you know, when I say Jamaica people have to really um, come and try to give them a chance, yeah, man. I just don't see it. Because Vegas come and try something, that ain't no work. Him get bullet as body killer, you know, say. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you watch what go on, here goes. No, well, first of all, I'm not modeling Jamaica after Singapore. What I've done is to look at countries around the world and picked things that are pragmatically sensible for Jamaica. So, for example, um, you see a small European country like the Netherlands being the second largest exporter of food. And you say, my God, if they can do that, why can't Jamaica? And the more I look at their system and see how they have done it, I say, whoa, we can do this here. We have everything and more than what they have. And they're the second largest producer of, of agricultural outputs at 95 billion um, a year. So, so here it is. Singapore has done some things very, very well. And we can, you know, um, copy what they have done and, uh, and use that. Now, in terms of the being non-aligned or aligned i prefer to make sure that jamaica remains flexible and build relationships with countries as opposed to talking about being aligned i want us to be able to talk comfortably with china talk comfortably with the us uh, talk comfortably with russia and make sure that whatever agreements we enter whatever uh, reciprocal trade um, agreements we design that it's done in the context of what you see there in our manifesto uh, to protect the interest of the Jamaican people and never violating the sovereignty of a single Jamaican. You, you spoke of, of, of Netherlands and, um, and their, 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 their labor market, yeah? Um, and how they were able to achieve, you know, you know what you just spoke about. But, but if I look at 19 on your manifesto, um, the labor market section, Employment and compensation agreements between private employers and employees are outside the scope of the government, and these contracts should not be encumbered 
by government mandated benefits or social engineering. We support the right of private employers and employees to choose whether or not to bargain with each other through a labor union. Um, bargaining should be free of government interference, such as compulsory arbitration or imposing any obligation to bargain. Um, so wouldn't this be private employees taking advantage of the marketplace? Um, and how, how are we going to be able to accomplish what you just um, um, spoke on, um, per se, the Netherlands and, and so forth? How are you going to um, accomplish this if we have private business um, controlling the price, controlling um, the marketplace, right. setting so the price? if the government cannot interfere with, with, with this? Well, first of all, when we talk about private and we talk about market, you need to understand that you're talking about citizens. So when we talk about the market and, and the private enterprise, you're talking about individuals being able to make their own choices. We are the private sector, every single citizen. Uh, what we don't want is what we currently have, which is you give politicians the power to manipulate the market in favor of big business in the name of helping the poor. So they tell us that their goal is to help the poor and they tell us that the regulations they're putting in place is going to do just that. When in fact, what it does is to suppress small businesses and micro businesses and give uh, big business the upper hand. Um, you make the environment very cumbersome. You make the, the compliance requirements very difficult. And the ultimate outcome of all of that is more people underemployed or unemployed or, or, um, or underpaid and so on. I'll give you another example, again, from Singapore. Singapore does not have a minimum wage law and Singapore does not interfere with the employment process in the way that we have now guarded against. And what is the end result of that? The end result is a, a massively highly educated, very competent and highly paid um, uh, citizenry to the point where Singapore has to now import labor to do its menial job. So any job which would consider menial, um, Singapore has to be um, importing people to do that because their citizens have now risen to a tremendously high level in terms of their salaries. So you have very high salaries in Singapore, very high competences, very high production, and it goes against the grain of what you're insinuating. You're thinking that the way for us to bring up um, employment and bring up wages and, and bring fairness to the marketplace is to have human beings, politicians like ourselves, having the power to meddle with the arrangements that um, citizens may make with other citizens because these are citizens you know if i own a business i own b suite jamaica and i am employing someone uh, i say i would like to employ you um here's here's what i'm offering would you like to take the job and the person says yes or no they want to take the job that's not that's not business controlling um controlling um uh, prices that is people deciding on prices that is me, the buyer, and you, the seller, deciding if we're going to agree on a particular price. And as a result of that, you now have the market doing what it should do. It indicates to you and me what we should invest our time and energy in. So, for example, if you see that um, Kalalua sell really hot because the price of Kalalua is up and you're seeing the indications of what that's telling the market, you decide to switch from potatoes to planting color because price is simply a communication. Price is nothing more than a communication. For example, right now, Jamaicans are suffering from inflation, even though we have a government that has full control of the economy and is able to meddle with any aspect of it. Why then do we have high inflation and high prices? Because we don't have the market being able to set the, the price of goods and services, and we don't have um, the market being able to adjust inflation, and we don't have the market being able to adjust interest rate. We have a central bank with the power to do that, and we have a government that can oversupply liquidity in the, the market and cause the inflation which we're now seeing. So we have to be careful that we don't ask for something that might be even more disastrous than the one that we've been taught to be disastrous. But, but 
I hear what you're saying, but, but, but what I'm really asking though, mm -hmm. based on employment and, and, and compensation agreements between private employers and um, employees outside the scope of the government. So if that is the case, and based on what you're saying about the, the workers and Singapore and so forth, wouldn't the private employees um, um, take advantage of, of, of the people that they're employing? If the government, if it is outside of the scope of the government, and you're saying if a man is offering a man that for a job, yeah, and um, it is between those two persons or those two entities or subjects, I'm saying to you, wouldn't they, um, how, how do we protect the, the, the workers? How do we protect the workers if the private employers, excuse me, um, are taking advantage of your mandate? Sorry, just a second, um, one sec. Welcome to everybody who is tuning in right now. Um, we have Mr. Vegas as well as the UIC president, Mr. Joseph L. Patterson with us in a conversation. Now, um, listen, like I said earlier, this conversation is very, very much important to every Jamaican to know what a manifesto is and what a manifesto is all about. And this right here, what Mr. Vegas is doing is awesome because he is breaking down step by step, you know, each thing in the UIC's manifesto and giving Mr. Patterson the opportunity to give us a better understanding of what could happen or what will happen, you know, based on the, the UIC's manifesto. All right. So I want everybody here, and, and I must say thank you so much to everybody who is here, who is keeping it respectful in the comment section and not being disrespectful and not being childish. Thank you so much for that. And to everyone that has already shared out the program, thank you so much. All right. Uh, Mr. P, you ready? Yes. All right. Great. Go right ahead. Yeah, so sorry about that. Um, I hear that there are some problems on the other feed that's going through to our um, uh, followers over there. So sorry, I have no control over it. But back to the question of um, Mr. Vega. So there are some assumptions that are being made. And the assumption is that um, employers can take advantage of employees right. if the employees are allowed to make their own decisions. So the assumption is that employees and, and, sorry, and the employers as well. Like we're not just talking about employees. We're talking about the employers because based on what is 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 written here in the manifesto, is basically saying employment and compensation agreements between private employers and employees are outside the scope of the government, and these contracts should not be encumbered by government mandated benefits of social engineering. So, right. um, so so I, I just want to understand there. Wouldn't this be a, an opportunity for private um, employ employers to take advantage of the, 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 the workers? Uh, no, it isn't. It would be an opportunity for um, employers and employees not to be manipulated by politicians. So the opportunity is to get rid of the politicians from manipulating either side. And normally the manipulation is to support big business against small business. So what what you are afraid of uh, what they have taught us in school and what they have taught us through the, the news media is that you must be afraid to negotiate your own price um not having somebody else out there a third party without any responsibility either to pay you um or to find the money to pay you or to deal with your personal um uh, uh responsibilities a third party who is now going to influence that relationship. And it's supposed to turn out uh, to be in your favor. But no, in a true market economy where you do not have big business being able to pay politicians to make regulations to suit them, what you have is uh, supply and demand. Each and every member of society is free to choose who they're going to work for and how much they're going to work for. Now, in a low skilled job a job which is very low skilled which which you can easily find people to work in because it's such a low skill job the price of that job is going to be very low naturally because almost anybody can do it as you go up the ladder in terms of complexity you now have a lot of price differential which is now going to come down to how competent a person is um, how much in demand is that particular position and how valuable that person is to the company in question. And now you're going to have price differentiation. The more you have government 
getting involved, the more you, know you start to have built-in inefficiencies. Persons are, are able to lock themselves into jobs even though they're not performing very well. And um, employers are in a position to use the regulations, for example, to stifle um, some markets. So they, they control the best people but have a lower price for that market because of the government manipulations. We're getting rid of all of that and opening the market fully so that a contract is a contract. You can freely engage in designing a contract with your employer based on what you want and vice versa. Now, what you're afraid of is the fact that you think that the, the employer is so big, you know, the employer is so big that you're going to be able to, to, to have unfair positions. Uh, but no, you're assuming that the person has no other alternative. And you're assuming that there wouldn't be other comp competitors who want those good employees. So once you have now a market where this one employer wants to be the big bad bully, he now faces a competitor who understands the market better and is able to better compensate and entice the best in the market. And that now pulls those employees over there. And that now creates the kind of outcome which we want, which is a, a high uh, value em environment for employees, a, mer a merit-based system where people are progressing because of how good they are, not because of either regulations favoring them or politicians manipulating a market for them uh, because somebody behind the scene who fund your campaign is able to drive those regulations to get those market conditions. So we understand this very fully and that is why we're designing it this way to have a truly transparent and open market. If, if now somebody tries to, to abuse the contract relationship, that goes to court and you have resolutions very quickly because in our system, no matter how rich or poor you are, let me say it the other way, no matter how poor you are, you will have full access to the courts because it's not based on how much money you have, it's based on a public service in the judicial process. So does that mean, does that mean you, you'll be getting rid of the um, labor union? No, no. Um, if you read so it what, carefully... What, what, what would the labor... What, what would be the, 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 the duty of the labor union? No, we're, we are, not, we're, we are, we're not defining the, the, the duty of the labor union. We're allowing you, the citizens, to decide if you want a labor union and what you want that labor union to do on your behalf. So you're free. Employees are free to choose their unions. They're free to design their unions the way they want it. But it won't be in legislation. The government won't be saying this is what labor unions should do or shouldn't do. Um, as long as the labor union does not use force or fraud, it is free to, um, with the permission of their members, to do what needs to be done to influence the outcomes um, of the negotiations. So let's say a, um, the employer, a company, is, is paying below the minimum wage. What, what should be done in that regard? Well, in a UIC world, there will be no minimum wage because we don't, we don't, the minimum wage is a very dangerous and counterproductive um, tool. It is used to get votes. It sounds right. good on paper. It, it entices people to vote for politicians who, like we're seeing now, come out and say 12,000. A minimum wage simply serves to um, set an artificial price. And when you have artificial price, there are unintended consequences. One of those unintended consequences is a mass amount of youth unemployment, which then becomes permanent unemployment. Why is that so? A person will not be able to get more in a marketplace than his productive capacity. So if you set an artificial price, all it does is make it illegal to hire him at any other price below that. It, it then robs him of the one tool he has, which is to say, I am willing to work for less in order, in order to get it. Where people have a problem with minimum wage, that they think a minimum wage should pay a uh, a person who is, let's say, 40 years old and have three kids. Nobody 40 years old who have three kids should be expecting to live off a Burger King salary. So, so, so we have a problem there. We have created a situation where we're, we're allowing adults to think that a job that should be for a teenager who is at home with his parents, going to school, and want to work part-time to have money to take out his girlfriend, buy a few things that he want, maybe even save some money, um, to invest in his own education. And suddenly a job like that, which is a burger fl flipping job, which should be a job for a kid, 17, 18, 19, 19, not an adult, not a mother, not a father, not a parent. And we have gotten people to believe in the silly idea 
that a job like that should pay enough to take care of a family. That is ridiculous. That only pushes up the price of the burger. And as a result, it changes the dynamics where um, more and more people who are doing those jobs are at the wrong age and the wrong stage of their lives. And we lock people into low-end, dead-end jobs. We need to change the psychology and start encouraging every citizen to work on earning their maximum potential. And the first way to do that is to give them the proper signal that government is not going to try to arrange things just so that you get a particular salary to feed a, a family of, of three or four. But rather, government's job is to give you an empowering environment, an enabling environment, so that you will learn, earn, and grow so that you're moving through a continuum of earning potentials. So what you earned at 17, which let's say we call that minimum wage now, is not what you're earning at 25. And what you earn at 25 is not what you're earning at 35. Why? Because you should be growing. You should be move. Sorry, you should be moving through the process and growing up the ladder of life as opposed to getting yourself stuck in a situation where you have three kids and you're working at Burger King and you're getting um, whatever they call minimum wage at the time or slightly more than that. And then you're asking the government to step in and change that. Let's teach our people true economics and teach our people how to be as productive and proficient as possible and let the system work the way it should work as a price signal to tell you where you should target your energy and focus and then build the people up from there. Not these artificial things being done by government, which by the way, works powerfully for big business because it, it allows them to use this artificial price barrier to keep down many people. And, to, and, and let them be the focus, the, the parameter is minimum wage as the measure. And they use that now to suppress wages across the board, which they have done in Jamaica, and keep more, 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 many people at lower level income because they're not allowing a true market price to take its effect, which would allow those who are most productive to be earning higher and those who are less productive to be motivated to become more productive so that they can earn higher as opposed to looking to government as the trigger. Mr. Right. P, let me, uh, let me ask a question, if I may, uh, sure. mm -hmm. Um, What about the company that would then say, you know what, there is no minimum wage, right. so I'm going to underpay someone? You yeah. know, uh, before, 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 you answer, before you answer that, Mr. Patterson, it's a good question, um, 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 unseparable. Are you going to stop the um, influx of foreigners Case in point, the Chinese from coming into Jamaica and, 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 and working. Let me let me answer work? let me answer the first question because it's related to the second. Right, of, I just want to type yeah. both of you. Sure, um, sure. So, uh, so, yeah. so the first part of the question is what would stop a company? Let's say there's no minimum wage. What would stop a company from right now in Jamaica? Minimum wage is um let's run it off seven thousand dollars. Um, there are different ones for different um you know sector and industry and all kind of foolishness. But let's say you have $7,000 and that $7,000 can't feed a family. $7,000 is, is a small amount of money. Um, fit for a, a person working, a, a kid, 17, 16 years old, working at a supermarket, packing bags as part of his life journey. And he's getting seven grand. Mommy and daddy paying the light bill, generally speaking, and putting grocery on the table. So he is... That's not going to feed his family, but it's, it, it is giving him a chance to um, learn how to be uh, a productive citizen. He's, he's learning how to take directions. He's learning how to work with teams. He's learning how to deal with customers and so on. Great. If that's not there, what would the employer offer him? The employer has to offer him a price that would induce him to leave his video game and the coach uh to come out and work for them to pack those bags if the price is too low when he compares the price versus what he could do with his free time he'll make a decision on that so the employer if he needs him will have to adjust the price accordingly now let's say there's somebody working for the employer and you think that they're not going to be able to drop the rate below minimum wage they can drop it all they want a smarter company will hire that person if they're any good so he's going to lose his best employees to smart companies who know that, listen, I can't offer 7,000 or whatever for this particular position. I need to go up. And so you're going to have a competitive market. 
Case in point, right now, even though there's a minimum wage, many Jamaicans earn more than minimum wage because some will never leave their house for that. I, I'm going to allow you to answer Mr. Vegas's question, but I just want to, to, to stress this, though. I understand what mm -hmm. your response was, but my specific question, right? Yes. The, a company is going to want to save more money than pay out more. So if they have employees and there is no minimum wage, now bear in mind, I'm, I, I would think a minimum wage is set to protect employees from being underpaid. So if, if, a, if an employee is being paid and they're not getting what they should get, then they could cry out and say, listen, this is minimum wage. I should be getting that or more. If there is no minimum wage, no laws that the employee could say, all right, then you're going against the law right here and you're paying me less than what I, I, I know I deserve. Wouldn't that be a problem? That's, that's the question I'm asking. Right. No, it's not a problem. The employee would, would quit and go to a company who offers them more. Uh, you're assuming that there's one company and no other 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 alternatives. Um, right now in, in Santa Cruz alone, you have um, three major supermarkets and then you have some minor ones as well in Santa Cruz. Any one of them that chooses to pay, and right now many of their employees get um, minimum wage or a little bit more than minimum wage. And the best employees, even in the same category, gets even more than that because the employer wants to keep them. So any employer which goes down they're going to lose those employees. But remember, we're talking, first of all, in the current environment. The current environment, there are many other factors which are being used to stifle the job market or being used to stifle employees. But in a truly free, free environment, what you have are many options and they're popping up every day because you don't have suppression. Right now, small businesses in Jamaica are suppressed. Micro enterprises are suppressed. So because you have suppression, you have less opportunities. The more opportunities you have, the more options employees will have, and the more you'll be able to better negotiate um, your price. What we have is an artificial system which makes us feel in our minds that we have protection, but in fact, what it is doing is oppressing the Jamaican people. It just, it just sounds good. You have a minimum wage to say this is the minimum, and you are protected. You're not protected because the minimum wage is actually zero. They simply don't employ you. And we have a lot of people who are at zero right now. You could set the minimum wage to 12,000 tomorrow. You'll have a lot of people at zero. If we don't fix the full problem, which I have tried to allude to, allude to if you don't fix the full problem and you simply talk about your setting minimum wage, all you're doing is increasing the pool of unemployed, making them permanently unemployed. The longer they stay out of the labor market, until we get to where we are today with higher and higher crime rates. So, so, so to the question of, of the um, foreigners working in the country, uh, yeah. how, how would you address that? Well, first of all, there should be no um, favorable treatment given to foreign nationals coming into the country like we're doing now. Right now, the government is giving favorable tax treatment to, and I'm not going to call any particular ethnic group, right. just generally, they give favorable tax treatment to competitors coming right, right. into, but, the, but, into but the space. Yeah. I understand, Mr. Patterson. And, and, and for the interest of time, I think we have a lot to go over. But what, what I'm asking mm -hmm. is, will you, what would you do about foreigners, like the Chinese coming into Jamaica to work? That's, right. that's so what I'm explaining to you is that we will not right. be giving them any favorable treatments. Um, and but, when well, it comes would, on would to... You, would there be, would there be um, any form of um, gap? Or the no, Jama that can, no can Jamaica be. has a Jamaica will have an immigration uh, policy, and so any company that wants to bring in persons into the country has to justify mm -hmm. bringing those people into the country. So the government has to look at what is the purpose of somebody coming in from any country, whichever ethnicity or race there might be, and it cannot be that you are getting a chance to come in and compete with Jamaican labor that's available. Take, for example, even in, in the entertainment industry, you have um, currently where people are able to bring in entertainers to do what Jamaicans are capable of doing and are ready to do. And they're being given special treatment to come into the country and, and take over the entertainment space, for example. So these are the kind of things that you, again, you do not want to have um, uh, government politicians being able to play games with the jamaican people so, so will you put a cap on, on on foreigners and and the amount of work they can 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 no it will be a matter of the 
No, it will be a matter of the the person who is applying for yeah. bringing in persons to I, make I think you know where I'm, I think you understand where I'm going with this, you know, because based on what you're saying, you know, you're saying yeah. if if there you, you're you're removing, you're going to remove um 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 what we were just discussing. So if you're gonna if you're gonna remove um that which is already there, wouldn't it be like the Chinese are like the Spanish people and my also but wouldn't it be in their interest or the company's interest to bring in those people and, and, and they work for less than the minimum wage? No, that they the can't you know. No, you can't bring remember you know, you're not talking about immigration, you're no longer talking about um labor relations within the country. You're talking about immigration now. So right. so would you set, would you set a price, a, a, a wage gap for no. foreigners? Or would it no. still be employees and employers can can negotiate their own destiny? That's that's no, yeah. yeah, we right. will not be setting any prices. Right. What so you're if, talking if about the Chinese, is... if the Chinese or the or the Spanish decide that they're gonna come into the country and work for less. Let's let's wouldn't that let's... wouldn't that create um, yeah, 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 yes. All right, sorry, Mr. Partisan. All right, let's let's do it in a way where we can ask the question and get the answers instead of cutting off each other. All right, so Vegas, ask the question straight out. Right. So, and so, so what I'm saying is, if there is no minimum wage, based on what we're saying, if there is no minimum wage, and you're saying someone can negotiate with another company, if you don't want to pay me this price, I, I'm I'm going to go to another company. But what if people can come into the country and work for that price that the company is willing to offer. Are you going to put a stoppage to that to say you cannot work for that price um, that the Jamaican people are refusing to work for? That, that is what I'm trying to understand. Right. And, and I'm trying to tell you that now you're talking about immigration. So the answer is any company who wants to bring in workers from outside, they have to make a case for bringing in those workers from outside. We're not going to set the price. They have to make a case. So if they, so let's say they need an engineer in um, aerospace technology, and we have no engineers here in Jamaica. You know, they've put out an ad, they have advertised for the position, and nobody in Jamaica has applied for the aerospace um, position. And so they said, based on these results, we're applying to be able to bring in an aerospace uh, person. All we'll be doing is authorizing the immigration aspect of this right not setting the price of it now if you go down to a minimum wage job now you're now saying the person is putting out a minimum wage job we're looking for people to flip burger they put an ad out and one thousand person applies and then they come to us and say they can't find anybody they have one thousand application but they can't find anybody there'll be really no justification for the government to approve an immigration uh visa for somebody to come in for a job that 1,000 Jamaicans have applied for, unless they can show with irrefutable proof that these 1,000 persons, even though they apply, they really can't flip a burger. Uh, I'm, uh, if, can, can, I, can I speak? Uh, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm, I've answered, yeah. I, I really want to move on from this topic, but I think it is uh, uh, this part of the, the manifesto, but I think it is very important for, for us to understand what's going on here. If you look at what is going on with even in America, with people crossing the border, and we hear it all the time, the work um, that people are not willing to do or the price that people are not willing to accept, people are coming into the country um, through immigration and accepting these prices. And of such, you know, there's argument or arguments that there is a, a um, an increase in unemployment. So a small country like Jamaica, with 2.5 to 3 million people, if foreigners are coming in and willing to work for what we are not willing to work for, wouldn't that increase unemployment? That's 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 what I need to get a yes or a no from, basically. No, but you're asking. You see, you're not asking the question correctly. You're at, you're now comparing us to America, where they have a large border with Mexico which is unsecured and people I'm are just giving an analogy. Yeah. No, so Jamaica doesn't have that problem. We don't have a problem where people are crossing our border without us being able to manage that. So if somebody wants to come into Jamaica to work, they have to apply. And if they're going to apply, it has to be based on a need. And if that need is there, then they will. it will be approved. If that need is not there, it will not be approved. 
So I think that answers the question. You're now trying to deal with a price issue. We're saying we're not going to be setting prices. We're not going to set the price that if you employ this person from outside Jamaica, here's the price you need to pay them. No, we're not going to do that. We're, what we're doing is saying, show us proof that you cannot find a Jamaican available to do this job. And that should be very easy. You put out an ad, we see how many persons apply for it. You show the qualification and you show us the evidence of the interviews to say they're not qualified or competent to flip the burger. And so these people that are lower than minimum wage, I mean, we're going to import them, which of course would be ridiculous. But I'm just saying that's the nature of the game. That's how we're going to be dealing with it. Uh, let's look at um, economic liberty um, so we can piggyback off that. Yes. Um, Uniters want all members of society to have abundant opportunities to achieve economic success. A free and competitive market allocates resources in the most efficient manner. Each person has the right to offer goods and services to others in the free market. The only proper role of the government in the economic, in economic realm is to protect property rights and educate disputes. It is, is not what, what and provide a legal framework in which voluntary trade is protected. All efforts by the government to redistribute wealth or to control or manage trade are improper in a free society. So if that is if this is what is um, what will be implemented, wouldn't the merchants be able to flood the market with imported cheap um, products in a free market? Okay, so you just well you kind of jump there a bit from what you were reading to uh, merchants flooding the market with with. Um, no, I'm products. asking. Right. But, but, well, no, merchants will not be able to just flood the local market with cheap products. But let's step back a second. Let's mm -hmm. say merchants are free to flood the market with cheap products. What does that mean? What does it really mean? It means that Jamaicans are buying products at a price that is cheaper than they otherwise would get it for. Why would you have a problem with, if they want that product, if that product is, is wanted by the Jamaican people, they want to buy it. Why would you be opposed to them being able to get it for for a cheaper price? Why would you want them to pay a higher price for it? So you're saying if anyone can decide what they sell the sell 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 for in the market? Of course. I mean, so everyone uh, can decide uh, the price that they, they they price on their their, their goods. Yeah, in a free in a free society, yes, which is what we want. We want a free society. So you, Mr. Vegas, is free to charge whatever you want for the products you produce and want to sell, or you buy and want to sell. And I am free to buy and sell the product I want to sell. All of us, all 2.9 million of us would be free to offer our services or sell our products at the price that we think best, provided somebody else want to buy it and we can't use force or fraud to get them to buy it. So, so you wouldn't care if, if someone imports goods into the country and is selling it cheaper than the farmers in Jamaica? Absolutely not. We're not, we're not opposed to somebody importing anything into Jamaica that is not going to kill somebody so it's not you know what we're going to do as a government is to create an environment that will now allow our farmers to be competitive we're going to create a, an environment that allow our entertainers to be competitive we're going to create an environment that allows all the different sectors to be competitive right now we have a, an environment which doesn't do that it makes it hard for jamaicans to produce and easy for them to import So you're saying so 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 the farmers in Jamaica and, and, and the products that are made in Jamaica that may cost more to to um, make or, or, or more to, um, to to plant these products is not an issue if, if someone or the merchants are importing importing cheaper goods into the country and competing with the farmers and the, the persons who are, who are who are creating products in Jamaica. Your premise is wrong, sir. Are you saying that Jamaica has to produce things at a higher cost than other people? I'm, I'm, I, I, I know of a fact that the farmers, it takes more um, resources to um, harvest or to plant some of these, to plant some of these um, crops in Jamaica than what can be um, 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 imported into the country. So we, our goal should be to ensure we have an environment where Jamaica has a competitive advantage in some things. We're not going to have a competitive advantage in, in everything. So we're not going to be able to produce everything at a competitive price. So what you want is an environment that allows Jamaicans to find their competitive space and to succeed in those spaces. So the reason why countries import, should import normally, you import because somebody else is better able to produce this than you. 
and then you export to them what you're better able to produce than them. So for example, Jamaica could be a grand tourist, just for example, a grand tourist uh, destination because of what we have to offer. So we, imp we, we, we export this product by having tourists come here and buy this product because we're better at it, we're good at it, or entertainment or whatever, while we need to buy phones because we don't produce it and we, and we have not figured out how to do that effectively. Now, what you're trying to set up is a moral argument that suggests that government is supposed to make sure that even though we're not competitive in a particular product line, that government should block the Jamaican people from accessing that product line at a cheaper price in order to protect the local industry. We don't buy into that. What we buy into is empowering the Jamaican people to produce competitively in the spaces that they can produce competitively and then do so. And you import what you can produce competitively. We don't want to set up a, a, a tug of war between import export. We want to set up a dynamic environment that allows us to export more than or as much as we import so that we have a good balance of trade. Are, are you um, cognizant of what happened in Haiti with the, um, with the um, rice farming? Yes. But wouldn't this be a similar situation? No. Uh, again, Haiti has not implemented a system like what the UIC is talking about. So if you want good results from your people, you have to enable your people. So the UIC, for example, instead of doing what you're proposing, we're going to invest in our human capital so that we have a very bright Jamaica, a very competent Jamaica, a very effective citizenry, as opposed to just playing around with protective uh, means, which in the end simply result in us locking in inefficiency and never achieving our full potential. I don't want that and nobody should want that if they understand economics. So what we're going to do is to make sure that the children of Jamaica are properly nourished, properly educated, properly housed, and as a result of that become very effective and highly productive and efficient um, um, contributors to the Jamaican economy. Uh, let, let's let's move on from there a little bit. Um, crime is one of the um, major thing that I think um, is is being talked about presently in Jamaica. Um, I see where you're saying um, we, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these things um, and uphold. Let, let, let me go a little bit further. Up. Excuse me. So, statements of principles. We, the members of the United Independent Congress, hereby challenge the moral authority of the omnipotent state and defend the inherent rights of every individual to be free. We hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live in whatever manner they choose, so long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal rights of others to live in whatever manner they choose. Government throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. All political parties, except the for the UIC grant to government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. Would this be um, something that the, the, the um, gang members and people who are, or, 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 who are partaking in illegal activities, wouldn't this be something that they, they, they welcome? Absolutely not. Um, how would they welcome it? We're saying that the government of Jamaica must respect the sovereignty of the individual. We're not saying that the government of Jamaica should protect criminals. A criminal is somebody who is trying to violate the sovereignty of another person by either taking their life or taking away their freedom or taking away their property. And the UIC system, if you read down further, makes it very clear that we protect the sovereignty of every citizen. And so the purpose of government is to make sure we have a very effective police service that will protect that sovereignty, protect your life and liberty, your property. We want a government that provides a safe environment, a clean environment, an orderly environment with the proper public infrastructure that we can do our best and we can do that feeling secure. So no, no criminal will, will like this system. So and how will you stop criminals um, or um, people who are partaking in illegal activities um, from, well, from, from, mm -hmm. from, from benefiting from their proceeds? If the state has the right to this um, government throughout history have regularly op operated on the opposite principle that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals without the fruit of their labor. 
you're saying basically individuals have the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. So how would you know, how, how would you stop criminals from, from, from partaking in, 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 in the benefits? Okay, it's a, um, so let's back up here. So what you have just read a while ago is talking about the relationship between government and a law-abiding mm -hmm. citizen. And now you want to talk about the relationship between the government and a citizen who wants to use force and fraud to deny others their rights. The role of government is to have a police service that apprehends and convict such persons and have them pay the price for wanting to violate the rights of others. Um, that does not conflict with having the government respecting those citizens who want to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Um, the, the, the problem you're having is that the current system of governance mm -hmm. doesn't operate under the rule of law, which should be objective. It operates under the rule of you can, whenever you elect a new government, they can kind of do whatever they kind of want and make up new rules and new laws and apply them as, as they see fit whenever. Uh, we say no to that. We want a standard set of rules. We call it the rule of law, which are objective. That makes it very clear that the government doesn't own you. The government doesn't have the right to tax you at will. A big sound, a big, big, big tune. Ja all it Emmanuel I woe. Ja Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat again. So much oppression, poor people face right now. Them crying out for freedom. Them crying out for free speech. Then said them want to stand up like them black liberators, like Malcolm X and Martin Luther and the ancient monarchy where compare the ways. Free up black people from it, tear them them fence. Yeah, Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well, the Gideon go bustin' out the mat. I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity, give us the teaching of his majesty, and we no war, no devil philosophy. No tentacle color of a man's skin is of no more significant, well, to the color of his eye. Remember all the war done in 1935. This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at 